friends we have successfully completed two modules module 1 and module 2 now the lectures on module 3 are now open in module 3 lecture 1 will be an introduction to the environmental issues and management which is one of the vital part in the HSC course at IITM Madras. Let us quickly see what would be covering in module 3 in this course. We will look at various environmental issues and management aspects of these. We will look at atmospheric pollution, flaring and figurative release models, water pollution which includes drilling waste, oil spills, oil sludge, drilling solid waste and production waste. We will also look at the features of environmental monitoring and the impact assessment and decommissioning which is caused during the platform management. We will also look at the overall structure of environmental management which arise from the problems related to oil and gas industries alone. In today's lecture we will start introducing what are those environmental issues which are of primary concern to oil and gas industries. The primary concerns are many but few of them are listed here. The environmental issues actually causes a severe impact on the shelf ecosystems and marine biological resources. It contributes to the life hierarchy at different levels and different stages. It significantly influences the fishing or aquaculture. It results in biological consequences of accidental oil spills into the marine environment. The oil spills which are result from the failure accidents happened in top side of the platforms cause serious environmental concerns in the marine environment. They are very serious because the issues are highly irreversible. One can ask me a question is there any report of visible consequences which can arise from this kind of pollution arise from the oil and gas industries. The complexity, urgency and variety of emerging problems in environmental management itself can be listed as one of the primary visible consequence that arise from oil and gas industries. Uneven distribution of marine life is again an evidence because the concentration in the shelf and coastal zone varies significantly because of the production units settled at these stages. The coastal zones habitat contain about 90 percent of marine commercial organisms which are shifted or which are transported because of the concentration of oil and gas industries in this sector. Most of the known oil and gas fields are also located in this zone which therefore causes a serious ecological disturbances to the marine culture which are habited at this place. It is very interesting friends to know that about 90 percent of aquaculture is actually habited in the coastal zones where many of the oil and gas industries and fields are located to be in this area. Now there are evidences in form of reports published on these issues which I will now highlight. Ecological impacts of oil industry can be seen from various published authentic reports Dix edited 1989 ecological impacts of oil industry which is a result of proceedings of international meeting organized by Institute of Petroleum London in November 1987 published in New York. North Sea Environment has a special report dedicated by Keynes edited 1992 North Sea Environment developing oil and gas resources the environmental impacts and resources cost published by LCV Applied Sciences New York in the year 1992. Subsequently, if you look at the long term environmental effects of offshore and oil and gas developments, Bosch and Rabelis in 1987 published a very interesting report indicating long term environmental effects of oil and gas industries in terms of development published by LCV Applied Sciences New York in the year 1987. Now, let us look at the responsible items which contribute to this kind of oil and gas industry pollution. To understand that we must know what are the different trends in oil and gas resources because we must address the problem from the fundamental region alone. If you look at the various trends involved in oil and gas resources, contribution of crude oil and natural gas to the total energy consumption is increasing continuously day by day which is a known fact to all of us. Their historical development is remarkable which we know and we appreciate because oil and gas industry is one of the industries which 
whose growth is promising and exponentially faster because of the reasons it has got very high dynamics in economics, it has got very rapid technological progress, wide geography of exploration is now being covered and there is a wide production activity happening all over the world. If we look at the world's energy resources in general as given and pointed out by Stanislav Patin in 1999, there are various sources of energy from which people depend on looking at the statistics about 30 years back and about 20 years ahead. There are various sources laying from oil, coal, gas, renewable resources and nuclear power. If you look at this table, it is interesting that the dependency of oil as a source of energy in the coming future is depleting whereas the dependency of source of energy in renewable source sector is exponentially or very significantly increasing. However, in the present scenario we are somewhere in between saying that we have a strong dependence on oil, coal and gas even today whereas the nuclear power is start entering into this market very decently in the recent times. So, if you look at the source of energy as on today in the present trend oil and gas exploration becomes a very vital sector for the economic growth of any country because the major contribution of the source of energy to any country essentially comes close to about 50 percent from oil and gas alone. Now, there is a, always a possibility that this trend will marginally decrease but not expected to decrease beyond 30 35 percent as you see in this picture as given by the Stanislaw Patti 1999 report. Therefore, oil and gas industry will still continue to remain as one of the dominant industry even after 20 years from this particular point of time of discussion. Therefore, it is important that this industry has to face a significant growth which is obviously seen in the natural gas and relative stabilization industries. Decrease in oil production in large regions is also significantly noticeable in the recent past studies reported by the researchers. Therefore, the expansion of oil and gas industry has become significant in terms of inland hydrocarbon fields are depleted completely and therefore, the attention of researchers is switched towards continental shelf in the world ocean region and that creates lot of disturbances in the ecology to the marine culture. This shift of course, to continental shelf will affect certainly the growth of marine organisms in a very significant manner. Recent exploration which is seen in polar region actually has become a focus of attention by various environmentalists all over the world. Technology and equipments used for developing offshore hydrate resources cause also serious parallel problems because the mechanical methods, the thermal and chemical techniques that are used to oil exploration has caused severe environmental issues parallelly to those sector. For example, hot water pumping, introducing inhibitors like methanol for enhanced oil recovery has created very serious problem and resulted in ecological disturbances in the marine aquaculture in the sea sector. Continental shelf which once upon a time was the main arena for shipping and fishing is now being explored for oil and gas. Nevertheless, we do not want the promotion of this industry all over the world. However, we should also understand what are the environmental issues faced by the production of this industry to the marine aquaculture which is one of the vital and important natural resource available to the mankind. Prospective locations identify for oil and gas fields in the shelf zones often overlap with the regions unfortunately with a high biological productivity of world ocean. The fish culture will be completely challenged if this kind of oil and gas fields are being explored for a larger form of production in the recent future. Gas hydrates which are of course highly promising are found unfortunately in the marine regions. Therefore, the development of these fields for production will certainly lead to severe environmental problems there is no doubt about it. Modern technologies being practiced for oil and gas exploration impose also serious threat to the environment. I will show you some statistics and some examples in the coming slides. If you look at the anthropogenic impact on hydrosphere caused by various activities in oil and gas sector as given in the table, it is very interesting that anthropogenic impact actually refers to assessing the state of hydrosphere and water ecosystems. 
Now let us look at the various activities in a given sector liquid and solid waste discharge which comes from the oil sector into the sea. The other activity can be subsea pipeline emplacements which can result in chemical pollution. The other important activity as we all understand is offshore structure abandonment because there are many platforms which have been installed in shallow waters and medium water depths which cannot produce oil which has become now processing platforms they need to be actually abandoned and issues related to abandoning these platforms can also cause serious anthropogenic impact on hydrosphere and of course we all agree and understand at least in HSC course that accidents are unavoidable. Of course we realize that we take ultimate care to avoid these accidents but because of various factors aligning in one shot accidents become generally unavoidable. If they become then they result in serious chemical pollution. Now let us look at these activities in different segments where fisheries is also one of the important segment of marine aquaculture. Let us look at the ecological problem and sanitary hygienic problem in different sectors namely local, regional and global level. If you look at essentially the accidents cost they have impact cost in sanitary hygienic point of view, in ecological point of view as well as in fishery point of view. However, in most the cases you will see that the impact caused by these accidents in the local sector in different regions is predominantly high. However, in global sector the accident cost causing chemical pollution in the fisheries is minimal or insignificant but however in regional sector they have been indicated as weak representation. So, these activities which are very common in case of oil and gas exploration industries have significant impact in different regions as you see here in different sectors like local, regional and globals accordingly. If you look at anthropogenic impact on hydrosphere which is caused by land oil gas production. Now let us look at the activities related to onshore which is oil pollution or subsea pipeline emplacement which can also cause serious chemical pollution again we can divide them into local, regional and global in these three sectors and they also been seen significantly influencing the local sector in all the three regions respectively. So friends anthropogenic impact on marine and freshwater systems actually cause hidden disturbances of natural structure and function of water communities it drastically changes the composition and characteristics of biotopes, it alters hydrologic regime and geomorphology of water bodies, it results in diminishing fisheries event, it also results unfortunately diminishing recreational values where you see lot of oil pollution, it also results in other ecological, economic and socio-economic consequences which are very important for an oil and gas industry engineer to understand. The most important derivative of any oil and gas industry consequence is what we identify as marine pollution. Marine pollution actually includes offshore oil and gas production and marine oil transportation in a total sector. Pollutants quickly spread over a large distance from the source in the water environment. In case of soil and plants it is actually fixed to a specific location unlike in the case of water bodies. So we have a very serious concern here when we have pollution occurring in sea where oil and gas industries are located during production systems the spread of this particular pollutants are very large and very fast unlike land pollution cost in terms of specific location which can be resulted only in soil and plants. So the volume and the dimension of pollution in terms of marine pollution is enormously high compared to other forms of pollution. Therefore, the most dangerous aspect is that when it happens it is unfortunate for all of us to realize it is too late to take any corrective measure. So always post accident scenarios are only being acted upon in marine pollution, preventive measures in marine pollution are very rare unfortunately friends in oil and gas industries. Let us look at why do we have concern about marine pollution to understand that let us see what are the contents present in a marine pollution what we otherwise call marine pollutants. 
marine pollutants can be grouped in increasing order of hazard. Group A has got the lowest and subsequent groups will have the highest. Substances causing mechanical impacts that damage respiratory organs, digestive systems etcetera form under group A. There are examples selected in the slide now suspensions, films, solid waste etcetera. Group B has an higher impact compared to group A in terms of its hazardous nature. Substances provoking eutrophic effects that cause mass rapid growth of phytoplankton and disturbances of balance structure and functions of water ecosystems fall under group B. Examples could be the mineral compounds, the organic substances present in the drilling outlets. Subsequently, group C includes substances that cause saprogenic properties that is sewage with high content of easily decomposing organic matter which result in oxygen deficiency. Group D includes substances causing toxic effects that damage physiological processes and functions of reproduction organisms. For example, heavy metals present in drilling fluid, chlorinated hydrocarbons etcetera can be a classical examples which result in group D contamination of pollutants which cause very serious effects on reproduction organisms on any biological mammals. Group E which is more worse than compared to all the groups include substances with mutagenic properties that cause carcinogenic effects, mutagenic and teratogenic effects on human beings. For example, benzopyrene and other polyclinic aromatic compounds biphenyls etcetera can be classical examples form under this group E which we can cause carcinogenic effects on human beings which can result in fatal. Let us quickly see after understanding what are the contents in the marine pollution or pollutants let us try to understand what is the scale in which they are present. Let us look at the table now which shows the scale of marine pollution components with different types of impact. Let us say these are the very common impacts caused in oil gas pollutions, oil slicks, tar balls, suspended solids, hydrocarbons which contains crude oil and other oil products, hydrocarbons of methane series. These are some of the byproducts which can cause very serious impacts. Let us quickly see what are the scale of distribution in terms of the marine com the pollution components where we can see the scale of pollution can be varying from local to global or regional. Let us see what are the sanitary, eco fishery effects which are caused by these pollutants. You will see in all the cases mostly the types of impact cost in the scale of distribution being local regional and global the impact caused by the sanitary issues and eco fisheries are highly considerable in nature which is very significant. Now, let us quickly see where are the sources from which these type of impacts come from. If you look at the oil slicks and thermal the essential source is oil production and transportation. If you look at the suspended solids they essentially come from bottom dredging, offshore structure emplacement and primarily from drilling activity. If you look at the crude oil and oil products as hydrocarbons they come from of course oil production, storage and most importantly from marine transportation. Hydrocarbons and methane series essentially come from gas production platforms which are now under the current active exploration stage in the entire world. Having said what are the contents or what are the marine pollutants and what scale they do affect in the sanitary and ecological disturbances in terms of local, regional and global setup. Let us quickly see and understand what are the consequences caused by these marine pollutants. There are different factors that contribute to the estimate of consequences of marine pollutants. The hazardous properties of these pollutants form a very major factor in understanding the consequences. Of course, the volume of the input into ocean environment is enormously high as I said the spread of pollutants in the water body is much faster and rapid compared to other forms of pollution in land. Most importantly friends the scale of distribution of these pollutants in water body is unimaginably high and it is very difficult to model this pollution phenomena because the pattern of the behavior in ecosystems is highly complex to study. And most dangerously and more vital 
the stability of the composition plays a very important role because they get completely mixed up with the marine environment which causes very serious effect to the marine organisms very easily. Let us look at the statistics quickly what are the different forms of marine pollutants and what are the worldwide contaminants in terms of the levels of mixture in microgram per litre in surface waters measured from statistics. If we look at the different ecological zone varying from south zone, ocean, pelagic area southern part, the enclosed sea open waters and coastal zones, looking at different forms of contaminants in terms of hydrocarbons, chlorinated hydrocarbons and metals present in drilling fluid outcomes or discharges in terms of mercury, lead and cadmium. Look at the concentration, you will see that the concentrations are higher and higher as they move towards the coastal zones. It means there is a very serious impact cost the ecological zones, various zones by these kinds of contaminants and the values you see they are significantly high because the values you indicate are per litre in the surface waters. So, there has been a very significant indication of the pollutants being present as contaminants around the world in different zones, but different contaminants essentially arise from oil and gas industries alone. Therefore, the anthropogenic impact on water environment is a very cumulative effect caused by the oil and gas production facilities installed in sea. Sanitary and hygienic consequences of anthropogenic impact on marine environment is mostly focused at the local level. However, it is advantageous that the global distribution of this has not occurred so far. Marine pollution therefore, is one of the leading factor for anthropogenic impact on marine ecosystems. Offshore activities, it has been seen friends that they contribute to about 2 to 5 percent of the overall pollution in the ocean environment. Though the number may be very low, but I am looking at the volume of this spread in a very rapid rate. Anthropogenic impact therefore, increases the concentration on marine coastal areas and shelf zones where aquaculture was one of the important habitat about 90 percent do rest in these zones. Now, let us try to understand what would be the impact caused by the oil and gas industries in the marine aquaculture or in general the ocean environment. To understand this let us try to know what are the different stages of oil and gas development because at different stage there are different forms or sources of pollution caused in the marine environment. There are of course, four stages which exist in oil and gas development. Stage 1 is a geological and geographical survey, even doing a survey you can also result in pollution, I will come to that later. Why these surveys are conducted because it is very vital to know the potential of oil well present in any given sector. The second stage in development is exploration where we do replacement, we do exploratory drilling, we plug the well and we also do what we call well killing etcetera what we all include in exploratory stage. The next could be of course, the production and development stage where the platform commissioning takes place, laying of pipelines takes place and production drilling happens in a very continuous scale and pipeline maintenance is also a very important factor which contributes to marine pollution which include in the deep development and production stage. Of course, the most serious stage is the last one which decommissioning stage where we intend to remove the platform and do well plugging which can also cause pollution very seriously. So, friends there are four stages that exist in oil and gas field development. In all these four stages independently and mutually they contribute significantly to the marine pollution which we will see now in the present slides. Now, let us look at the four stages in this table, the GNG survey stage, the exploratory drilling stage, the development and production stage and of course, the final stage of decommissioning of the platform. Let us look at what are the general activities which generally happen most commonly during the stages. If you look at the survey stage, it is very important and all of us to agree that we do lot of seismic surveys and we do test drilling during this stage. The seismic surveys result in interference with fisheries it has got a very serious impact on water organisms, whereas tested drilling leaves lot of sediment resuspension 
which increases turbidity in the given zone. If you look at the exploration stage of oil and gas field development, we do replacement, we do exploratory drilling at this stage, which discharges lot of pollution and it has got a very serious interference with the aquaculture. In terms of production and development, we do platform placement, we do pipeline laying, which has caused lot of physical disturbances in ecology of the marine environment. When you talk about drilling of production wells, there are many operational discharges, which has a very serious effect in terms of marine pollution. They also result in what called accident spillage and which result in lot of physical disturbances to the marine aquaculture. During development and production, we have got to also transport oil, therefore we have support vessel traffic which is very highly volumetric in a given production system which results in operational emissions because the production vessels or the supporting vessels do travel in the marine environment. They also do lot of emissions, they also do lot of discharges, they disrupt with the marine birds which present in the marine ecology. If you talk about the decommissioning stage which is the final or a vital stage of course in oil gas in production system platform removal and plugging of wells takes place at this system or at this stage which also leaves lot of operational discharges. The most important is the residual remains of the platform which causes ecological disturbances very seriously. They create lot of serious impact on organisms when explosives are used for decommissioning of platforms because it has been seen in literature that use of explosives has shifted a paradigm shift or caused a paradigm shift of marine aquaculture from the location where the platforms are generally decommissioned. Now having said this, let us look at the statistical report which is presented by ICS 1995 which indicates the amount or extent of oil discharge in North Sea alone in terms of tons per year for about a period of let us say quickly 6-7 years gap. There are different mention about drilling cuttings, diesel based drilling, drilling discharge and accident spills which has been reported in ICES 1995 as an oil discharge in tons per year. You will see the drilling cuttings has been consistent in constantly present or seen to be present for a duration of 46 years whereas the accident spills is sometimes increasing and sometimes decreasing. However, the presence of this oil accident spills can never be ignored from the statistics. But unfortunately friends please understand the drilling discharge pollution has been found to be an increasing scale steadily for a period even window of 6 years during this stage. One can ask me a question what is the vitality of this particular data in the present scenario friends please understand the trend still continues however the complexities are very highly varied therefore the data presented here cannot be projected for future applications because the complexities involved in this kind of modeling is very high. However, the fact still remains there that drilling discharge and accident spills continue to be a representative value in marine pollution even today. Let us focus on drilling operations and the consequences arise from the drilling operation alone as a part of marine pollution. Drilling operation involves the drilling mud discharge. For a fact to understand it is about 15 to 30 tons from a single well which gets periodically discharged in the marine waters. Cuttings containing dry mass is about 200 to 1000 tons from a single well. Please understand the number is phenomenally high. In case of of course multiple wells the drilling mud is about 45,000 tons for about a range of 50 wells. Cutting is about 50,000, 500,000 tons, 50,000 tons for about 50 wells. Water discharge is about 1500 tons per day even from a single production platform. The volume of discharge in ocean environment which is seen in different parts of the world as reported by NEF 1998 has got a different sector as reported here. In Gulf of Mexico 550,000 cubic meter a day friends, in offshore California 14,650 cubic meters per day, in Alaska 22,665 cubic meter per day in North Sea alone is 512,000 cubic meters per day in Australia it is 100,000 cubic meters per day. So one can see very clearly from this report or the statistics shown by NEF 1998 
the volume of discharge per day is phenomenally high in terms of causing marine pollution which is of course a disturbing factor which disturbs the ecology of the marine environment seriously. Now try to understand what are the main constituents present in oil based drilling fluid as indicated by Davis Kingston in 1992. There are different constituents present in oil based drilling fluid which causes a serious concern to the marine environment. Barite is about 61 percent, base oil is about 31 percent and the remaining amounts to calcium chloride, various emulsifiers, various filtrate agents, lime and viscosifiers used in the production systems. Therefore, the main constituent essentially comes from the base oil and the barite which closely about 92 percent. Each component friends of the drilling fluid has at least one severe technological effect which we call as consequences in the marine environment. Therefore, drilling discharge which contains very heavy metals has got serious and severe impact on the marine environment. Pollution is also produced or caused by produced waters during drilling. Produced waters in drilling operation contain dissolved salts and organic compounds the oil hydrocarbons, traces of metals and suspensions are also seen in the outcome of the drilling waters produced from the drilling platforms. Hence, the composition of produced water is very complex in nature. However, it generally contains benzene, toluene and xylenes which is about 30 milligram per kg in total of that of the discharge volume. It also contains biocides, organic molecules and heavy metals which causes serious concern of marine pollution. The chromatographic analysis of the discharge water in Gulf of Mexico conducted by a study showed very high and relatively stable levels of phenol and its alkaline homologues in the discharge which is coming from the drilling fluid. Even radioactive elements like radium 226 and radium 228 are seen in the produced waters as you see from Gassamp report 1993. The radioactive elements are very dangerous because they can cause catastrophic effects to any living mammals. Radioactive elements though of a very low level in terms of its contribution remains a focus of marine pollution in the recent studies. During contact with sea water these radionuclides interact with sulphates, precipitates and form what we call radioactive scale on the mammal surface. They increase radioactive risk in the local and regional areas of the produced waters. It seriously affects the marine life very significantly. Adding to the complexity we all know and understood what are the forms of drilling accidents, why they cannot be avoided we know about them. So, drilling accidents occur due to unexpected blowouts of liquid and hydrocarbons from a given production or exploratory well. It of course, results in large oil spill if the accidents occur. One of the world's largest oil spill happened in 1979 near a shore of Mexico after blowout of drilling rig Ixtoc 1 resulted in oil spill close to about 10 months dear friends. The quantity was ranging from 2740 to 5480 tons of oil as reported by Gorley in 1988. Drilling accidents as we all understand essentially of two types. One is catastrophic situation which involves intense and prolonged hydrocarbon gushing. The other can be a regular routine hydrocarbon spill and which results in blowouts during drilling operation. Friends both kinds of accidents discharge high quantum of volume in terms of contaminants in the marine pollution which is a very serious concern which causes ecological disturbances to the mammal life in ocean environment. We also have underwater storage reservoirs because storage is a very major concern in the production units. When you talk about underwater storage reservoirs, they are used to store liquid hydrocarbons in large volume. They are used when tankers are deployed for oil transportation or pipelines because you need a space to store the oil. The risk of damage to these reservoirs is also quite high. It mainly happens during tanker loading or during severe weather conditions. On damage, they become a concentrated source of marine environment or marine pollution which can toxicate 
with methanol very seriously. Of course, pipelines are used for transporting hydrocarbon from the production source to the shore for further refinement. They are very complex in extensive system having large lengths embedded in seabed in thousands of kilometers. They are one of the main factors of environmental risk during offshore developments. The factors contribute to pipeline failures are the following. It can arise from material defect, can cause pipeline corrosion, can result from tectonic movements of the seabed, can also be encountered from the ship anchors and bottom trawls failure. Pipelines can cause small term to a long term leakage to the marine environment. Intensity and scale of toxic impacts that arise from pipeline failure when on the marine biota in accident zones vary significantly. They depends on combination of, of the above factors like material defection, pipeline corrosion, tectonic movements and because of the damage caused by the ship anchors on the pipelines. If you look at an overview of the impact cost on marine pollution by offshore drilling operations, there are large and multi scale activities of offshore and drilling happens which imposes complex impact on the marine environment. Impacts are of chemical, physical and biological in nature. Seismic signals generated during even surveys are even hazardous to the marine fauna and flora. Explosive activities of abandoned platforms result in mass migration of commercial fish. Chemical pollution also causes a significant impact on the marine environment. Large offshore accidents cause oil spills leading to serious ecological consequences. Friends, fate of unused oil platforms and underwater pipelines cause serious threat to the mechan ecology in general. So, in this lecture we try to introduce what are the different factors, scenarios and regions involved and affected by marine pollution caused essentially by the products, operational features and different stages of oil and gas production in the marine environment. Thank you very much.